cool. Um, next up, we've got an awesome speaker who I'm really excited to introduce. Her name's Annie Lai. She's with Huawei, and she's on the OpenStack Foundation board. I've had an opportunity to work with her, and I just I couldn't be more excited that she's here. She's done amazing work in China to help grow OpenStack adoption, but also just contributing um, day in and day out with a lot of passion. And so before we hear from her, we're going to have a quick video from Huawei, and then you're going to get to hear from the Annie Lai. Thank you. The age of the smart society is rapidly approaching and will revolutionize how our physical and virtual worlds interact. The cloud will play a significant role and enable industries to emerge and grow within it. Huawei is a customer-centric ICT technology and service provider whose old cloud strategy helps customers transform their traditional IT into cloud using the latest technological innovations. Huawei Fusion Sphere is an OpenStack-powered cloud platform which has been deployed in many industries such as telecommunication, financial services, government, media, education, automobile industry, etc. Huawei firmly believes that open source drives innovation and actively supports and promotes various open source technologies and communities by hosting regional and global developer networking events communicating customer requirements, and initiating innovative projects in communities. Join us in building our cloud ecosystem. Together, we can make our dreams a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Annie Lai. Good morning, stackers. It's so good to see you in such a beautiful city, Barcelona. Before I start, I just want to give you a little bit of background about Huawei. Huawei has been in the telecom technology and service business for the last 29 plus years. And 14 years ago, we made a conscious decision that we have to invest in IT, which is because we think IT and CT are converging, and we need to create ICT solutions in order to better serve our customers, both telco and enterprise customers. Due to our heritage in telecom, so the kind of projects that we pick out tend to be large size projects, and sometimes they are multinational, multi-year projects. And a lot of times, we would even venture out into unknown territories. In those situations, we will build a joint innovation centers with our customers, or we will co-invest with our customers. Because we firmly believe that by only working closely with our customers, that's how we can push technology boundaries while helping customers innovate their business. So for the next eight, nine minutes, I'm going to share with you some of our OpenStack customer cases and their thoughts on what OpenStack should be moving forward. As you know, OpenStack is a little bit over six years old. Compared to Linux, 25 years old, we are still a youngster. However, our speed of innovation and our presence in data center are not less than Linux which is mostly due to our open collaborative platform and culture. So far, we have six core projects, over 60 Big Ten projects, and a lot more in the pipeline. For a six-year-old community, it's not too bad. And last two years, we have been putting focus effort in making OpenStack Enterprise ready by adding a lot of uh, REST features and functionalities and making improvements in management and usability. We have work groups that help achieve that goal, too. I know we're not perfect, but we're getting there. And lately, we've been seeing a lot of interesting use cases in the areas of data center monetization, business innovation, and digital transformation of various industries. So we can actually say OpenStack is physically and virtually moving into all industries. There's a book titled The Fourth Industrial Revolution written by Professor um, Klaus Schwab. In that book, he actually mentioned that the first three industrial revolutions were based on the discovery of steam engine, electricity, computer and te 
telecom technologies. And we are at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution, which is generally caused by the digital transformation, which is impacting the way we live our lives, the way we work, and the way we connect with one another. Companies are talking about Uberizing their business in order to stay competitive or to stay survive. Cloud is the cornerstone of all these digitization or Uberization. Telco is probably one of the first couple industries who truly have to take cloud seriously because their competitive landscape is changing due to OTT. So telcos have to embrace cloud fast. Telco's cloud journey generally starts with uh, building a private cloud. Here I have a customer example who is a first tier multinational telco based in Latin America. Since 2015, they have launched OpenStack based private cloud running OSS, BSS, CRM, and office management systems in six countries where they have their subsidiaries and subnets. OpenStack has allowed them to create a standardized cloud platform and share resources and services and improve their overall IT operations and cost. And very often, when telcos uh, working on their private clouds, they are actually paving the way for their NFV projects. NFV is designed to improve the network services. SFR is a French telecom. They announced their um, open set based NFV this year at the TM Forum in Nice. One of their architects from SFR actually said, their OpenStack based NFV has helped them enjoy the benefits of more agile platform, faster time to market, lower operational costs, and most importantly, it has helped them improve their customer experience of their network services. The third area of interest for telco is public cloud. I know some of you might think that, oh, public cloud war is over because of those large internet, you know, mega internet companies. I actually have a different perspective, especially for regions outside of US where data sovereignty and security are very important. In addition, telcos also have existing relationship with customers due to their network services. And a lot of telcos outside of US have a relationship with the government. They are strongly backed by the government. And most importantly, Telco owns the network. So I think Telco definitely has a very competitive advantage in becoming the preferred national brand of a public cloud service provider. And um, th this year, March, um, Deutsche Telekom and Huawei, we announced our joint venture, DTOTC, and which is Deutsche Telekom Open Telecom Cloud, which is an open state based large cloud, and it guarantees 99% service availability at the infrastructure tier. Later, there's going to be a speaker from DT who is going to talk more about DT OTC in detail. So please stay tuned for that. The next example I want to show you is a government cloud based on OpenStack. Jiangxi is a beautiful province situated in the southeast of China. It is generally known for its beautiful landscape of um, rice paddies, mountains, and rivers. Yet, Jiangxi has more than 45 million populations, 11 prefectures, and 99 counties. Can you imagine the complexity of managing such a complex government? Jiangxi government, actually, this year, they have launched their two-tier OpenStack-based government cloud. Resources are located um, in a distributed environment. Services are created at the uh, provincial level and the municipal level and be shared by all the counties. This is all done possible because of OpenStack. This year, Jiangxi government has created, migrated, and standardized over 1,300 services. OpenStack has allowed Jiangxi government to improve its overall efficiency and better serve their citizens. Dongfeng Automobile, a cor motor corporation, is one of the big three car makers in China. Last year, Dongfeng sold close to 4 million cars. 
Domefone is a group company that has many subsidiaries and regional offices serving their customers. This year, Domefone has announced their, its um, five-year digital transformation plan based on OpenStack. Domefone has four technical bases, running their operational backbone and digital service backbone. Services are created at the group level and are shared at all subsidiaries and regional offices. OpenStack is the key to the success of Domefone's digital transformation. So hopefully by now, you see a trend here. I've talked about telco, telco cloud, government cloud, manufacturing cloud, and there's also media cloud, um, transportation cloud, education cloud, etc. We're seeing the emergence of industrial cloud, which is defined as industry-specific, cloud-based, pre-configured with elastic and scalable capacity, information, and resources deliver a service as a form of uh, service to its business entities of that industry. We think OpenStack is a very good fit for industrial cloud due to its openness, its scalability, its interoperability, and API-driven architecture. To conclude, I would like to share with you what our customers think about OpenStack. Our customers are very happy with the, our speed of innovation, which is due to our open collaborative platform and environment and culture. And customers are very happy that we're putting more emphasis on enterprise, making OpenStack enterprise ready. Moving forward, in order to make OpenStack more industry ready, we need to have a better understanding of our customer situations. So for developers, I would like to urge you, when you write that blueprint, when you write that line of code, when you make that commit, think about how eventually our users and customers will take advantage of your creation. For product folks, I'd like to urge you to join product work group and other work groups to help our community better understand customer requirements. Industry clouds are already happening, and they are going to be more and more prevalent. They tend to be service-driven. Resources are physically distributed, but need to be logically orchestrated and managed with, a over, with a one single point of management. Services need to be federated, not just across data centers, but also across clouds, both OpenStack Cloud and non-OpenStack Cloud. Next, I would like to urge the community to think global. OpenStack is truly a global movement. OpenStack consists of member companies coming from more than 180 countries. This year, I helped organize the first OpenStack Day China. It was kind of a last-minute grassroots effort. We only had three months to prepare for, so we didn't have a, a lot of expectation initially. But at the day of the event, we were pleasantly surprised that we had more than 3,000 registrants, more than 2,400 attendees. The energy was just astounding from that event. This year, Newton released. 23 Chinese companies contributed to that release. I mean, the energy level from the Chinese developers was just amazing. And of course, I'm also seeing the similar energy happening in Japan, in India, in Taiwan, in Australia, in Korea, in other countries, in APAC, as well as Europe market. And um, more and more, we're seeing momentum happening in Latin America as well. So I would like to urge the community to think global when you write code or when you create process for OpenStack. Last but not the least, I would like to encourage our community to think innovation. I actually think we are limiting ourselves by constantly comparing OpenStack against those proprietary cloud platforms out there based on features and functionality. Because ultimately, our goal is to create something amazing for our users and customers. Our goal is to deliver our customer requirements instead of playing catch up with competition. I like what Mr. Imat Susu from Intel once said, open source, open mind. I really love that phrase. Let's be open-minded. Let's be innovative. Let's think outside of box. And that's to try something that nobody else has done in the industry. Because that is the only way we can push the technology boundaries and make OpenStack unique. Thank you.
Thank you, Annie Lai. She's an amazing speaker. I'm really excited we were able to get her for today. Um, I was actually reminded of another stat listening to her talk that I recently discovered that, that might, might surprise some of you, that we actually, in the Newton release, had more developers in Asia than in North America that contributed to the Newton release, and about a quarter of the developers were right here in Europe. So that really shows that OpenStack is a global movement, and a lot of the efforts uh, from Annie have, have helped us get there.